I got some stuff. So every year, my wife and my wife's family get me a few things that I like for art stuff that I can experiment with and try. And this year I have a few things. Four pens, four inks. That's what this means, it's not a gang sign. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? So I'm gonna go through this mini art hall thing and then I'm gonna do a drawing with four pens and four inks. So first I got these pack of jelly rolls. There's two different sizes. There's two of three different sizes. That's the real math that works. Uh, the 5, the 8, and then the 1.0. And so I'll definitely use these. So then they got me some more white pens. This is not racist at all. They have, this is the Zig Acrylista. It's a acryl, you know what it is. Then they have the Zig Fooded by Yori. That's another pen. I love these words. Then they have the Zig Brush Pen Find, the Ultra White. I don't know, they're all white. I don't, this is ultra white for some reason. Then this is the Zig Posterman. I can say that word. It's Posterman. It's right on there. I got this set of 36 acrylic pens. Now, here's the thing about this set. I'm going to show you here in a second. It's called the Earth and Skin Colors. And I understand, there. when you look at this chart, you can see there's a few skin colors up here. And you can see the skin colors that they're designed to replicate. However, these are the pens, the colors of most of the pens. Do you see these? If your skin is any of these colors, you're probably dead. Most, there's like a handful, there's a couple of skin tones up here. That's it. They should just call this the Earth color set. I know people are all into the skin tone stuff, but you gotta, you have to make sure that what you're saying th these are, that it's fully represented. And I don't think, listen, if you have gray or green skin, you're probably in trouble. I would think so. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on YouTube sometimes. I got a sketchbook because that's what I need is another sketchbook. You see my sketchbooks. But I, I really wanted this. I asked for this and, and I did get this. And this is a watercolor book. This is 100% cotton from Hanna Mule. Listen, here's the thing. I'm going to start with the fountain pens. But all these words, you know, here in America, we butcher all other languages. We don't say the right words. We don't pronounce them correctly. And I think... Just to not be offended by us, if you produce a pen or something in a different country, you should have different boxes just for the U.S. that have the phonetic spelling on it so we don't butcher because we're going to come on YouTube and say things like Kawiko. That's what we're going to say. And then everybody in Germany is going to get mad because it's supposed to be Caveco or something like that. But we see the W, we pronounce it wrong. That's just what we do. I know it's terrible, we're horrible people, but that's what we do. So maybe just have a different box that says Caveco and then replace the W with a V. And then we'll pronounce it right. And then when we say your name, nobody gets upset. But I believe that it's Caveco. So I, I did get a Caveco Sport. This is the Skyline Sport. So it's it's the plastic version, but it's the silver one. I don't like the gold one. The silver, that's the way to go. Black and silver. And these are nice little pens. I love these little pens. They, you can take them anywhere. You can do it. I don't, this is my first series of Caveco pens. But I do have another small pen that I use. And I take it all the time, everywhere I go. But these are nice. They're portable. They're one. I always put the thing upside down. They're nice. It's it's a wonderful thing. Here's another Caveco, even though it says Kawiko on the side. It. You know how long it took us to say jalapeno correctly. But anyway, this is the aluminum one, and the aluminum ones are are very nice. That that was probably really loud on the audio, but I apologize. This is the same version, kind of, but it's in the aluminum version. Now they come with these, these little converter, uh, converter. They're not converted. They're cartridges. These are just the regular ink cartridges. 
I had to go buy the converter. I'll show you that now. You just open this up here. It takes a second. And this is the, the plunger style. So you just push it down and then pull it back up. It takes a little while. You'll see in the video later, I'm going to fill all these pens with this ink. The ink was not in there before. You'll see me fill and what kind of ink I'm using. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that here just just a second. Now, I love the Black Forest pen. It's it's a wonderful pen. I think it's Hongdian. I think that's the name of the company. I think. But anyway, this is the Birch Silver Birch Forest version. And it's a beautiful pen. I love it. It looks so sleek and elegant. It's very nice. I really enjoy these pens. And if it works anything like the other pen, we're, I'm going to be in great shape. I love these. Okay, now I want to show you on here. It says Moon Man. Okay, can you see that? It says Moon Man right there. That's what it says. But for some reason, these pens go by another name. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to try and make it so you can. So I don't know if you can see the name at the bottom there. It also has the same name. It's, it's uh, Mojang or something like that. But it's, it's a beautiful pen. I mean, it... It's thick and heavy. It's a demonstrator pen, which are my favorite pens. I love to see all that ink in there, and I'll go through that here in a second. But it's just a beautiful pen. And when I have these big pens, I never post the caps on the back. You can. It's, it's fine, but I don't. I like to hold the smaller pen in my hand. It fits nicely, and that's how I like to use it. And it feels more balanced that way. Otherwise, you sit it this way, it feels heavier in your hand and I don't like that because I'm very heavy handed so I'm always gripping the pen like my life depends on it and sometimes my hand gets tired if I can just have it balance very nicely and relax I can maybe control it a little better I can go a little bit longer with this uh, draw on this stuff but anyway it's the same company it's just that they have two different names depending on how they're marketing most of the time on Amazon or something you'll see that Mojang uh, yeah, you'll see that Mojang number. It's not a number. It's a name. It's a Mojang name. It's definitely not a number. I don't think so. Uh, if anybody speaks, I believe this is a Chinese pen. If anybody speaks Chinese, you tell me, is that a name or a number? I appreciate it. Okay, three of the inks are diamine inks, and I love diamine inks. So I have the ancient copper, the green black, and the autumn oak. And I love these inks because they're so colorful, they're beautiful, and the flow out of the pen is wonderful with these inks. It doesn't get stuck, it doesn't dry out, it's wonderful. I have other ones, I have the Oxblood, um, I have the Aurora Borealis, and the Twilight, and the Smoke on the Water, and just beautiful colored inks. I love this brand of ink. Now I have another one that I'm not going to be able to pr pronounce, but that's okay. It's... Um, it's, I know it's Pilot. It's made by Pilot. I can say that word, but it's Iroshizuku Yoyaki. That's, that's how you say that. I'm a professional YouTube reviewer, and I know how to say words. The color of this thing is beautiful. Look at, can you see that color? It's it probably not, because I have the blue light in the back, and everything looks blue off of me. But anyway, you'll see in the drawing, it looks beautiful. It's supposed to be like Orange Sunset, I believe is what yoyaki, yuyaki means. There it is. So, but the color is just beautiful. I, I think you can see it a little bit. Anyway, you're gonna see me use all those things, the ink and the pens in this drawing. We'll get into that so I can stop embarrassing myself. All right, so I'm going to quickly go through these. I'm gonna put some ink in here. You'll see, sometimes you have to prime these a little bit. So you'll see me go over and over and try and get the ink in there and sometimes it doesn't go in right away. Don't worry about that, that's normal. And this can be a mess. So make sure, if you get it on your hands, it's not a big deal. Soap and water, take it right off. But you don't wanna get it all over your desk. So go ahead and put some kind of towel down just in case you make a little spill, drip or whatever. But for the most part, this is not a difficult thing. I like to fill directly through the nib and not through the actual converter. You can take the converter out and just fill the converter and then try and push it through the nib. But I like to just fill it through the nib and wipe it off. It makes it so much easier. You don't have to deal with priming it and the ink comes out immediately. It's just a little bit more fun that way and definitely a lot less of a hassle. So, and there's that one that just you have to pump. It's a weird like 
I don't know, you pump it a couple times, and I kept trying to pump it and get the ink up in there, but it eventually got there. You have to prime it. There's a lot of air in there, and you got to get that all out. Make sure that the ink is really what's getting up in there. But this is really the fun of fountain pens, is all the colored inks that you can put in there. And then I go ahead and I swatch them out for you just so you can see the colors on that sunset orange, the one I'm not going to try and pronounce. I go over it a couple times just because it, it changes color the more ink you put down. So I wanted to show you that it could go from a very pale orange to a very deep orange and it's a very, very beautiful color. I love it. So for this I'm just going to draw a fun little design. I figured I'd just keep repeating different patterns and just have fun drawing some lines. So I started off with a single shape and then I just started adding lines to that shape and then connecting those lines however I wanted to connect them. And this is what I ended up with, and I think that it was overall it was a fun drawing. I really love drawing with colored inks. I don't know what that is. And, and it's weird because I usually like more of the contrast and the, you know, the stark black and white. But when it comes to fountain pens, the colored inks just, they're the best thing to, for me. I think that that's the greatest thing in the world, the greatest invention that we ever had. So I found some old music that I recorded now. I want to play a song for you. It's only like two minutes long. It's not going to take up much of your life, but I'm going to share it with you just because I like to do that kind of stuff with you. And just to show that just because people don't like the sound of their own voice or they don't like the way that they do things and they think that it sucks, it doesn't really matter. If you remove that ego and just put it out there anyway, it really won't matter. Now, I want to just point out when I wrote this song, it was back in the 90s. It was like this little grungy thing that I was writing these songs. And I was doing it by myself. And then in 2010, I actually had a way to record that old song. So I said, I'm going to do that. And I was using crappy equipment, the crappiest stuff you could probably ever use. I was using a, a BR-800 to record into, which is a Boss BR-800. It's a little mini recorder, digital, and it was it was fine. It, it's not the problem of the, the thing itself. That's not it. I mean the instruments and things I was recording with, they were terrible. I think the guitar I had had a, um, the volume pot was all crackly and only like would tune in to certain areas on the, it doesn't matter. That, that was like that. Then I had, they, I programmed the drums from that recorder, so it kind of, it's just, it fake sounding drums doesn't matter to me, and it, I wanted it to sound raw. When I first wrote it, it was designed to sound like you were listening to someone's garage, and basically that's what it sounds like. It's very raw sounding. Nothing in this song or in these the songs that I recorded would be anything that I would actually do now. I don't write like that. I don't record like that. The sounds themselves, I don't even like the tones necessarily. But this was just a phase I was going through where I just loved the grunge music scene. I loved it when I was younger, all through the early 90s and up through, well, probably my whole life. I still listen to it. I still like it. I just don't write that way now. I write a little bit more melodic and that kind of stuff. But but I did have fun with this, and I, there's a song since I wrote them when I was in high school. I wanted to record them. Years later, I did, and this is what happened. Now, the microphone, I do have to point out, it was one of those cheap, like, $10 karaoke microphones that you just, you know, you can't really get a sound out of. Some of the voice recordings on some of the songs that I recorded, I had to actually stick a box over my cardboard box over my head and put the microphone up in there just to get you can isolate just my voice a little bit because it was just terrible it would be tinny and echoey and it was just horrible so i wanted to i had to do certain things to record certain things and it's only a two minute song so don't worry about that but i'm going to play it for you just because i've never played this for anyone i don't play my stuff for anyone but i decided to put it out here for you guys because like I said, you just have to put your stuff out there. It's very important that you put your stuff out there, not because it's good. That's not why you put it out there. You put it out there to connect with people and get some of that, just you build that relationship with people because you're, you're giving them something from yourself. And that's how you develop that relationship. And that's all I'm trying to do here. So here's a song that I am not necessarily proud of, but 
I just want to share it with you and it'll take up a couple of minutes of video so that's always a good thing. Okay, so now you see what I'm saying. You couldn't really understand a word I was saying. I was just tapering off into the background. You couldn't hear anything. That's a part of that microphone thing there. But, man, I had fun recording that. And when you do something, and here's this is the actual point of this whole thing, is when you do something that you've been wanting to do for so long, I, like I said, I recorded that back in the 90s. And then 2010, I finally had a way to record the song, and I wanted to record it. And I did, and I had fun, and I felt accomplished, even though it sucks. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It was just fun. It was something that I wanted to do, and I did it. And now I'm sharing it with people, and that's the whole point of this whole thing. I do encourage you to share everything that you're doing with people. It's just fun. It's a wonderful experience. You just... It doesn't matter. You can laugh together that it sucks. Don't worry about that. I know people have this ego and they want to, oh, the, my art is it's me on the paper. It's not you on the paper. It's your idea on the paper. And it's I've said this before. I'm just repeating myself from other videos. But sometimes your videos are going, your videos. Yeah, if you make a video, sometimes they'll suck too. Listen, sometimes your art that you make is going to be terrible and sometimes it's going to be wonderful. But you'll always feel accomplished. You did something. You created something that's never been there before. And let me tell you something. That means something. And so when you share that with people, you can connect with people on a completely different level. Doing this, doing this channel has changed my life. I swear it has. And I've just enjoyed so much of it. I've enjoyed talking to so many of you and just... It's a wonderful experience. I just encourage you to share what you create. It's a fun thing to do, and it's very fulfilling. Okay, last one, I promise. This one, the microphone was actually working a little better. This is before it was complete crap, so you can hear me a little bit better. It sounds a little bit more polished, but still, it'll hurt your ears. The whole point of this was to be aggressive, and that's how it came out. So even though I'm not always jumping up and down when I'm singing, and it's very slow, and it's just, you'll see, it's the loud, obnoxious, in-your-ear thing, and I get it if you flip off the video, but just bear with me for a couple more minutes, and this is another one.
Now, I will be the first to admit that I do not have a singing voice, so don't worry about that. It's not about that. It's really about the music. It has nothing to do with the voice that's in the music. And anything I do share in the future will be completely different than what you're about to witness right here. I have to apologize. Just put the children to bed and then you can listen to this. Just because I smile Doesn't mean I'm happy Just because I laugh Doesn't mean I'm funny Just because I try Doesn't mean it's good enough Just because I feel Doesn't mean I feel so good I'm sorry, that was a little bit obnoxious, and I didn't understand at the time, uh, well, you know what, I was younger, and of course, you turn everything up to 10, the gain was up to 10, I was slamming as loud as I could, and that's just what you do when you're a dumb kid, and I, I was having fun, I was a having fun dumb kid, so. Now you ask me, is that uh, something scary to share? Yes, it is. Because it's something that was very personal to me, something I was working on, something that I never thought I'd show to anyone or share with anyone. But it doesn't matter. I'm trying to prove a point here, so I'm putting myself out there, and guess what? Even if someone says that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life, it doesn't really hurt my feelings because I've removed my ego from everything I share with everyone all the time. And so if you like it, great, we'll have a conversation about it. If you don't, that's great too. It really doesn't affect me at all. And that's the point that I want to make. I am I keep saying that a lot. I There's only one point I want to make about 10 times. There's 10 different points I only want to make. So that's just how I am. You thought that you were on an art channel, but really you're in a music art channel. It's just or bird art channel, or whatever I happen to be doing that day. I'm trying to incorporate the art in every video, but sometimes there's other elements in there, and some of you enjoy it, and some of you don't, and some of you will click off immediately and not watch another second. That's fine. That, that doesn't bother me at all. So thumbs up the video if you did stupid things when you were younger, and you never shared them with anyone because you were scared. But I'm telling you right now, just go ahead and get that old stuff. Go back to your second grade, your hand turkey that you drew and go show somebody and say, look, I did this when I was in second grade and I'm proud of it. I don't really care if you like it or not. That's fine. We'll talk about it. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.